Welcome back to Let's Clean Power Wash Simulator. We, uh, cleaned off the front of this hatch last time, as well as one in the back. And, uh, things are looking pretty good from this specific angle, but we still need to get to those wings. Shout out to Elthwar, who says, Perhaps Engine Seer Power Wash could get some recalibrations for the motive augmetics before the next assignment. It seems like they are a bit off. Perhaps letting Engine Seer Tyros help was ill-advised. I had thought that Space Marines were generally put under before the impacts, the surgeries to make them, uh, Space Marines, but the Games Workshop article notes that many of the organs are to be implanted while the subject is in a fully coherent state, at least for the Silver Skulls chapter. Each one has some variance in the methods, but even still. As for the death rate, it isn't necessary. But since they can only make so many Space Marines, they regard the lethal trials as a good way to determine who is most qualified. People are one of the only resources the Imperium has in abundance. Ooh, boy. Plus, they seem to treat the surgery as yet another test of toughness. Jesus. I thought this was interesting. The Chaos Space Marines, on the other hand, have Fabius Bile, who is looking to have even stricter selection methods. Loyalists have one Marine per 100 aspirants. Bile's method is one in a thousand. Bile is one of the few people that is making new Chaos Space Marines rather than recruiting traitors. And, uh, that's actually very interesting to me. Because, uh, well, I kind of thought nobody made new Chaos Space Marines. I thought there was an attempt once, but it was so grim grimdark that I'm not even going to mention the name of it, so you can't Google it. <laughs> oh, God. Um, yeah, I really did think they were just going for, like, recruiting traitors, so hey, you know, you learn something new every day. But on that note, shout out to Justin Jones, who says, Now I know I want to steer clear of Age of Sigmar, if Games Workshop cannot even respect their own setting narrative. As an aside, the... Oh. As an aside, the Blood Angels have a rather tense relationship with the Mechanicus. It has to do with the fact th that the Blood Angels have some rather unique technology that isn't Mechanicus approved. Ooh, that would piss them off royally. And then mentions, to be fair, BDF, the Warhammer 40k universe is rather complex and multi-layered. I have been in the hobby in varying capacities for 20 years, and I am always learning new things about the lore. That's what makes the setting so interesting, in my opinion. I like that. It's a good observation. Always something new to learn. You know, like comic books. The Crisis on Infinite Earths was rather famously a, uh, an ex a way for DC Comics to reset their own extremely complicated uh, backstory to something simpler that the writers could, you know, keep track of. Warhammer went in exactly the opposite direction. You know, it's like they've, they've got decades of lore, and they very much just want to keep on piling onto it. Because, you know, that's kind of the way real life works. It's extremely complicated, and uh, it's not like there's ever a time in history when nothing interesting is happening. Uh, middle floor. Honestly, closer than that. Oh, there was a hot spot there. Come on. Might oh, it might be clipping through something. Oh, that's pretty good, yeah. Oh, Blood Angel Thunderhawk pilot. Data recording battle of withheld strategic ace to mare B-785. <laughs> battle Brothers engagement confirmed. I'm kind of surprised that term hasn't come up yet. Oh, before, I mean. Enemy position breached. Redemptor Dreadnought Brother Ezekiel. Advancement confirmed. Zakiel? I don't know how you say that. He wasn't very talkative. 
Acquisition of Restricted Artifact Age Class Complete. Brother Zachiel proceeding to Extraction Point while I'm here. Well, I'm glad that went well. I'm glad I, you know, played my part in that, even if it was a very small one. Hey, just ask Batman. Preparation is nine-tenths of the battle. And before anyone puts any G.I. Joe quotes in the comments, Preparation includes knowing. <laughs> There's just another 40% on top of that. What even is this? Access ramp hinge. Oh, I see now. Like this is supposed to push forward and pull this down with it. Alrighty, uh, back up. Oh, I'm right, yeah. Oh, oh, I'm stuck. I'm stuck. There we go. deposits and grime. stripes. Not bad. All right. <clears throat> Ooh, how embarrassing. Wait, the canard wing mount, flight deck armor, side armor. Okay, no, I don't think the nose goes further. That's good. I'll just make sure of that. No, no, I even went above it. Gotcha, you little bastard. One hinge down. I must have flown through a cloud of gunk. Seriously. Sorry, I wanted to find a specific comment because it was uh, really interesting to me. 
Ah, yes, uh, shout out once again to Justin Jones, who says, Someone needs to tell the Eldar that no one has fucked up as badly as they have. I mean, yeah, there was the Horus Heresy and all, but we, humanity, didn't birth a god of murder fucking! So, yeah, shut the fuck up, Eldar. In the vanilla Dawn of War campaign, there is a story mission where you have to deal with some Eldar trying to fuck about with a Hive City's defenses before a Tyranid invasion. You thwart their nonsense, and then the Farseer informs you that she would gladly allow, I believe that's a million humans, to die in order to save one Eldar life. Kinda puts the whole thing in perspective considering their arrogance. It's not to say that the Eldar won't work with humanity. They do, but it's a very tenuous alliance. I need to get. Oh, yeah, on the top, actually. Yeah, I remember that. I actually can't remember if it was, uh... Oops, slow again, because I'm on the top. I can't remember if it was the Dawn of War 1 or 2. I want to say two. That one definitely had Tyranids in it. But there was... Oops. There was something that really struck... That uh, really stuck out to me. Something that I think is what helped me finally get 40k. Like, really understand it. And that was specifically... Oh, just this bit down here. Uh... Well... The story of that one starts with you discovering that one of the planets where the Blood Ravens gather their aspirants from... There was a, a, a word for their recruiting worlds, I don't remember what it was. Uh... One of, those, one of their, you know, one of their favorite planets is being overrun by the orcs who have just come out of fucking nowhere. And, uh, you get there, and the first few levels are all about putting the stomp on the orcs. You know, as you do. Ugh, stretch. And, uh... You know, you put the herd on the orcs, you chase them away from the cities, all that good stuff. And then one of the orcs, before he dies, mentions that they were led here by an Eldar lady. And so you seek out and you find the Eldar. And they... What they said... is that... <sighs> Jesus. Well, they detected a Tyranid hive fleet that was, uh, making a beeline for one of the Eldar's planets. And, you know, the Tyranids being what they are, you know, once they've locked on to a thing, they're just gonna fly in a straight line, which meant that they were going to end up at this Imperial planet before they ended up at the, uh, at the Eldar planet. Did they tell the humans that their world is being threatened by the all-consuming Scourge? No, they did not. It did not even occur to them to do this, in fact. Oh, wait, that's, I guess that's the back. Yes, it didn't even occur to them to do this. What they did instead... was they led the orcs to this planet, because they had calculated that... if the planet belonged to the Imperials, if it was full of human defenders, then they would inevitably fall to the Tyranids and be consumed. Whereas if... fuck. Move it back a little bit. 
Whereas, if they did this... Whereas if the planet, you know, was owned and held by the orcs... Whereas if the planet was owned and held by the orcs, the same thing would happen. The orcs would inevitably fall, and they would uh, be consumed by the Tyranids. The difference is that they determined that because they're bigger and tougher and don't need to be enhanced to reach the level of, uh... Well, no, they're not... Orcs aren't quite on the level of a space marine, but, you know, they're way higher up the, uh, the, the chain than regular humans. So they determined that if the orcs owned the planet, they would hold out longer before inevitably being slaughtered, which would buy the Eldar more time to fully evacuate their planet and get all their shit off of it. That really struck w stuck with me. They were willing to let tens of thousands of humans die because it was better for them that the humans get wiped out and replaced with the orcs. God damn. say this is what made me finally get uh, 40k, it was like, oh, they're not enemies, per se. They just don't see each other as people. <laughs> like, these humans only hate the Eldar on a conceptual level. Because they actually agree on quite a lot, but they're not human. Actually, yeah, the whole thing with Monkai seems a bit uh, hypocritical after the whole Slanesh thing. I do agree with that summary from uh, Justin. Excellent. Might as well get back up there and, uh... Clean off the, uh, insignia up here. Oh, there's no banner under this one. There we go. To be honest, given you know the ornateness of uh, 40k decorations, I'm kind of surprised the inside of this chalice isn't done up to be uh, as if it's full of red fluid. Might as well get the windows while I'm up here. See, this just makes me feel like I'm holding a squeegee. The lines moving up and down. Wait, what is that? Oh, I guess it could be a reflection of the window, hypothetically, but it kind of looks like it's meant to be the sun. It's probably just a generic reflection that appears in all the levels. I 
I don't know why, but that reminds me of a thing. From a completely unrelated game. Uh, Deus Ex. Or the classic one. Or I want to say that game came out in mid-2001? Maybe 2000? I don't remember. And I mentioned that part because... Well, it's kind of weird. Um, specifically... You know, the game, uh, a big part of the game takes place in New York. I don't even know if it takes place anywhere else because I've never played that one. But I do know that they were running into trouble because they're trying to create the New York skyline, as seen from Liberty Island, you know, for uh, one level. And they're having an issue because the skybox system they use uh, is symmetrical. They put in an image and it mirrors it on the other side of the sky. So as, you know, if someone says to someone else, uh... You know, uh, the World Trade Center is kind of an important building for New York, but uh, if we put it in the skybox, it, two of them will show up. And, you know, sort of trying to experiment with that. Oh, what if we, you know, put it right next to the seam so two of them show up? Well, no, that doesn't work, because the seam is way over there in the wrong spot. And, you know, stuff like that. What they ultimately came up with was, uh... Oh, we'll just not put the World Trade Center in the skyline at all, and we'll claim that it was destroyed in a terrorist attack. Yeah, that didn't age well. <laughs> but not actually as poorly as uh, an episode of the uh, the X Files spin-off, The Lone Gunman. While I'm on that subject, because they did an episode where some kind of conspiracy wanted to stop me if you've heard this one before, a conspiracy wanted to destroy the World Trade Center and blame it on foreigners in order to get the United States into war. And the method they were going to use to do it? A uh, hacking system that let them take remote control of uh, jetliners so they can redirect one into the fucking building. Now, you know, it's oh it's you know it's a TV show, the the good guys eventually triumph and manage to save the day and prevent the World Trade Center from being destroyed. Except then it was like I think I wanna say it was like a, a a week before it was actually destroyed IRL by a plane flying into it. To you know, which was so on the nose that the writers actually got contacted by the military or somebody, like the FBI. Hey, we need to talk about that thing you did that almost it almost came true. Just weird thoughts, man. No, oh, there's another thing that's kind of crazy. If nobody uh, remembers, you know, the 20th and 21st centuries in this uh, setting here, and nobody in 40k even knows that building ever existed. Oh, man. But I'm rambling about depressing topics, and, uh, well, honestly, that's not entirely unheard of in 40k. Uh, we got more of this building, this building, this, uh, ship to clean. So I'll see you next time when we, I don't know, get rid of some of this skunk, I guess. We could work over here on the rear landing wells, yeah. Till then, I'm Burning Dog Face yourselves a great day, Burning Dog fans, and uh, tune in for the next Let's Clean Power Wash Simulator. Later!